back to the channel, everybody. Ryan here. Uh, gonna get it ready to work on my buddy Raymond's car, and I thought about bringing you guys along with me, because this is a fairly easy job, but if you're not careful, you can run into some difficulties. But let's look at this real quick. <clears throat> what we're doing today is we're gonna do this here starter. Now, the starter is right here. This whole thing right inside of here. Now, it's not hard to get to, but what it is is this here front motor mount underneath of these connectors, that there, is the backing plate for the starter to bolt in. So when you remove the starter, effectively, you are removing the motor mount bracket from the engine. So if you don't have the motor braced up just right, it can turn around and shift, and then you'll fight trying to line the holes back up. So I'm going to hopefully do this really quickly and in one shot so it doesn't take too long, but... You want to start off with getting yourself some tools. Uh, typically you need a 13 millimeter to pull the power cable off, but on this car for some reason it was a 12 millimeter. Um, disconnect your battery of course. I've already loosened this so I can pull this right on off. Make it a little easy for me. Get your little... Oops, yep, there we go. Alright, now I got the battery cable out of the way. Let me turn, get that down wrap that up there there's the little screw then you'd have this clip here to come off which usually goes right here already pulled that off for other reasons we were testing the starter to try and find out if it was actually good or bad but for the next part you're gonna need yourself a ratchet I've got a snap-on flex head 3 8 and a 16 millimeter you can use a 5 8 I believe on this that's usually what I use but nowadays I've got the proper tools but you just bust it loose, bring it right on out. Of course, if you pull the battery tray out, you can fit a little impact driver in there, and this will go a lot faster. I, I also like doing things by hand when it's on other people's cars. I don't, it's not that I don't trust power tools. I do trust power tools. I just, I don't always trust myself, you know, just a slight problem. And you can cross thread something if you're not on it right or if the bolt itself is seized and you go giving it too many dugga duggas trying to pull it off you, know, you turn around and break the head off and then you're stuck drilling things and I don't want to do none of that I don't want to do any part of that I want this to go smooth and easy so I just do it by hand I'm going to need to ratchet for a little bit more that's alright though but yeah basically doing the starter is not very hard it's usually three bolts for the five speed. I believe it is four for the automatic, or maybe it's two for the automatic. And the mount bracket is different. I don't I don't remember. But there's one bolt. Looks like there's some chalky, nasty, milky, oily stuff on it. That's pretty gross. We'll have to clean that up. And then there's one more on the underside that you gotta get to. Easiest way to do it would be from the bottom, but I'm filming. So I'm not going to the bottom. So I've got myself a nice extension with a wobble end. Of course, I say nice. The the, the tool itself isn't nice quality-wise. It's a Harbor Freight Pittsburgh. But for my purposes, what little bit of stuff I do, it does me just fine. But you get this joker down on here. It's just a matter of lining it up. Usually there's a third one under here. It would be a 17 millimeter, but for some reason my buddy Raymond doesn't have that one installed on this car. So when we're done with this, more than likely, we're going to run into the barn and try and find another bolt. You see the starter's already flopping around. It's a beautiful thing until the socket comes off. Hmm. So I guess I am going to go from the bottom. I'm going to have to lay down. Whatever. I guess that means I can get rid of the giant extension now, though. Ugh, should be up right there. I'll be over. Let me see that real fast. Just so everybody can see, that bottom bolt and then the hole to the left of it. That bottom bolt is the starter bolt. And then the bolt hole to the left is the other bolt I said that he was already missing. But this is a pretty good general open area to get to. The power steering hose can be in the way, but 
you see with his bracket, it's uh, it's already loose and out of the way. But there you go. We'll bust this bad member jammer out real fast, and then hopefully get a little more tension on that motor. Hopefully it'll just be wham bam. We put the next starter in here and. All goes well it should start right up I do believe he was having a starting issue he was telling me about where the key won't activate the starter so you have to jump it with a wire which is why the why the, the lead was already off for that and I couldn't show you that but this job overall even if you're a new person working on cars and ain't never done anything as long as you've got the right tools it shouldn't take you more than a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. All right, there went the starter, and as you saw, I'm sure the motor shifted. All right. Meh. And that's a starter on the ground. Not real sure why he was having major issues with it, but sometimes <clears throat> the Bendix wouldn't poke out or it was having trouble coming out. And right now it's it's pretty stiff trying to get it to lift out of there. I mean, it's supposed to be stiff, but it's not supposed to be, you know, ungodly. Grab some rags, wipe myself down. Should probably wear gloves just in case. Motor oil and other things like that, they're not good for your hands. But any real mechanic will tell you, get it done. So the starter we're putting back in here, unfortunately, is not a new one. But I do know it was good because it came out of a car that I had in the back that I drove when I got it. Alright, so now that that's up, we can just take this and lay this in this hole of course when I'm gonna go to do this all this stuff's gonna be in the way so you know go ahead and move all this stuff out your way do whatever you gotta do now is actually a good time to reroute a bunch of things since it's out and not in the way but you should just be able to take this go right down here in this hole just like that flip it around and then somewhere in here is a little pilot where it will, oh, there we go. All right. So this is the other bolt that I said we were gonna wipe down. Go ahead and wipe it down. Get all the nasties off of it. Stick this back down in there. And this is where that alignment I was telling you in comes in. You gotta be real careful about this because your hands are down here and this could happen and that could happen, but move this mount around until you get it nice and lined up. Eventually it'll take. You just gotta, gotta be patient with it because it's not gonna wanna go at first at all. There we go, that felt solid. Yeah. All right, so that bolts in. Now, at that point, if you want to, you can start putting things back together on the top to get them out of the way, but the best thing to do is to go back underneath while you're, while you're fresh. Oh, gotta get over the deck. Come back down here. And actually, that, that all looks lined up really nicely, surprisingly. Slide the bottom bolt back in. Might take some finagling as well. Might have to raise or lower the motor a little bit here and there. Which, of course, is a pain in the ass to do when you're under the car. Mm. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that you're back together, all you have to do is snug those two bolts up, 
put your wires back on, plug everything back in, reroute everything if you want, but that's that's essentially a starter. Hopefully this wasn't too long and drawn out. Uh, if you have any jobs specifically that you'd like to see me do, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little notification bell. Try and get me, uh, try and get me out there. Let's make this happen. Thanks. Have a good one. You guys be good.